official policy show, a weekly program hosted by Les Fermazari. In recent years, Italy has suffered from a harsh double-dip recession that saw the country lose more than one million jobs. Now, the economic situation in Italy is still critical, with the country struggling to emerge from its longest post-war recession. Gross domestic product, or GDP, has dropped by more than 9% since the start of the Eurozone debt crisis. Industrial output has fallen by 25%, and the spending power of average Italian family has returned to the levels experienced in the 80s. Our guest in our program is Enrico Colombato, a professor of economics at the University of Turin and director of the International Center for Economic Research in Turin, Italy. Professor Colombato, welcome to our program. Thank you. Good afternoon. Well, Italian President Giorgio Napolitano has stepped down. In February 2013, Mr. Napolitano agreed to start an unprecedented second term, at the end of which in 2020 he would have been 95 years old. Therefore, his early resignation was always impending. Was his resignation expected, Professor Colombato? Well, yes, it was, in that when he was elected for the second term, he said it right away that he would not go down to the end and that he would resign in a couple of years or so, as soon as the Italian situation stabilized. Now, I'm not sure that the Italian situation has indeed stabilized, Mm -hmm. but it is true that his resignation was not unexpected. Mm -hmm. Uh, Of course, now the big problem is that everybody is arguing about who is going to be president after him. Mm -hmm. And the range of potential candidates is still fairly wide. Mm -hmm. Well, Italian politics has undergone a significant breakthrough over the last months. Uh, New protagonists, new languages, uh, new projects of marked uh, political landscape. Is it sufficient for an economic revival? Well, actually, you said new project, but the right word is, let's say, optimistic and uh, Mm -hmm. sanguine announcement. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen much of these projects. With, uh, when Premier Matteo Renzi came to office last February, mm-hmm. he said that he would turn Italy around in a matter of weeks, if not months. We mm-hmm. haven't seen much for the time being. It is true, however, that he has been very skillful at uh, killing domestic opposition. He is virtually number one uh, unopposed in the country. Berlusconi is out of business. Mm -hmm. The Grillo's five-star movement is not a serious challenge, so he can actually do whatever he likes. The problem is that, for the time being, he hasn't done much. He has been raising taxation. He has not uh, reformed the judiciary, which is something he had promised to do. So we're still stuck. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly pointed out a few minutes ago, Mm -hmm. GDP is stagnant and unemployment is still rising, which is very, very bad news. I mean, Mm -hmm. uh, bear in mind that in Italy, youth unemployment is about 43 Mm percent, which means that uh, one, almost one out of two young people are jobless. Mm -hmm. And that is very worrying, especially for the future. His experience uh, was at the national level when he was mayor of Florence. Uh, My question is, could Prime Minister Matteo Renzi's lack of experience at the international level undermine his ability to modernize Italian politics and kickstart economic growth? I'm not sure it's a matter of lack of experience. Mm-hmm. It's a lack of vision. Mm-hmm. You have, In order to make structural reforms, you must be prepared to be unpopular, to have a strong vision and possibly a deeply rooted ideological perspective. Uh, He wants to be popular, that is true by all means, but I fear that he lacks a vision and he lacks an ideological commitment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he does not really know what to do. <laughs> this yeah. is the bottom line. Okay, analysts suggest his very willingness to shake things up in what Italy needs and what this uh, willingness to push for reforms will be precisely the source of his success. Do you agree with that? Well, yeah, I would agree that if he brings about the much needed reforms the country needs, he's the man who can do it because he has the political power to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure he really knows what he wants to do. What wants to do. And I'm not really sure he knows how the machine works, operates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the ambiguity is there is no doubt that he failed down on the job. 
he does not perform. Now, did he not perform because he does not know what to do, or did he not perform because he does not know how the machine operates? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the former applies, and the very fact that his governmental team is fairly weak proves mm -hmm. that he is uh, intrinsically weak. Yes. Well, Professor, uh, what are the priorities for the government of Mr. Renzi to avoid being put under budget surveillance by the European Commission? Oh, now he's begging Mr. Draghi to bail him out. Uh, there is no mm -hmm. question about it. I mean, the Italian debt is out of control, mm -hmm. regardless of what the government claims. It keeps growing. The mm -hmm. only way to keep it under control is by growing faster than the debt grows, mm -hmm. and this is not the case. So if you want to keep say, market quiet mm -hmm. so that you don't have a speculative attack against Italian debt, you must beg Mr. Draghi <laughs> to bail <laughs> Italy out, which means basically to buy uh, Italian government bonds or mm -hmm. to promise he would do so if required. Mm -hmm. So far, the, the gamble paid off. It is going to be a winning gamble for the next few months as well, because, you know, with this uh, 500 billion euro yes. program, mm -hmm. uh, there will be a lot of firepower with Mr. Draghi, and that will pay and will help Renzi mm -hmm. out of the mire. But still, we still need structural reforms, and these reforms are not on the table for the time being. Mm -hmm. What role will the new Jankar plan have on EU and Italy in particular? Well, you see, the problem is that if you have somebody bailing you out every time you're in trouble, mm -hmm. what is the incentive to put your house in order? Virtually none. I mean, mm -hmm. think of your own household. If you're living above your means and you're squandering resources, mm -hmm. and every time debtors come to you and say, hey, Mr. Rossi, <laughs> you pay mm -hmm. us back. Mr. Rossi has a Mr. Bianchi coming up saying, don't worry, I'll bail you out. What yeah. is the incentive for Mr. Rossi to behave properly? Uh, unless we are able to deregulate and to cut expenditure substantially, we'll never get out of business. And as long as somebody will give us ammunition not to do that, mm -hmm. we'll be in trouble. Does Italy need more money or does it need real investments, opportunities and uh, interesting projects? We need to keep our entrepreneurs at home and we must give them a suitable institutional context within which they can develop their entrepreneurial abilities. Italy mm -hmm. does not lack uh, brains. We do not lack bright people. We don't lack entrepreneurial people. We lack an institutional framework within which this entrepreneurial, say, powers and abilities can be put to work. People mm -hmm. are willing and uh, they're longing to do something, but given the current state of the art, I mean, regulation, judicial system, taxation, nobody is going to spend a penny in this country. Mm -hmm. You spoke about reforms. Prime Minister Renzi spoke about reforms. You're right. He spoke about reforms. <laughs> he didn't do much. And the only real thing he did, which is the so-called Jobs Act, which is um, a reform of the labor market, mm -hmm. is a very wishy-washy reform. It's very mild. It's unlikely to unleash entrepreneurial powers and uh, to attract investments. Mm -hmm. uh, it's far yeah. below what is needed. In Italy, some private companies dispose of huge uh, liquidity and big market access capacity, but they don't want to invest. Is it that risky? It is risky, yeah, and, and costly because, you know, taxation is high, regulation is high. If you have euros in Italy, and you're right, many people mm -hmm. do have a lot of liquidity, You'd rather invest it abroad. You don't invest in the country. That said, a lot of resources are ready to be spent. But as long as we don't have certainty and fair rules of the game, that money is going to be kept in the bank. Mm -hmm. The recession has caused permanent effects uh, on the output capacity of Italian firms, affecting the level of investments that fell by almost 30%. Is it always due to the crisis affecting Europe? I don't believe in you know generalized statements. I think that of 
course, we have a crisis in Europe. Mm -hmm. But if you have good ideas and if you are competitive, mm -hmm. a crisis is also a land and a time of opportunities. When the others are in critical situations, if you have good ideas, good investments, you can beat them. Uh, the problem is that in Italy, uh, we don't have certainty, we don't have flexibility, and so people don't invest. Do you think capitalist system need to be uh, restructured? Well, we're not living in a capitalist system. I mean, if, it, mm. if you are in a system in which the government I mean, the takes Europe, the away European, the European more, system. Uh, well, whatever, Europe, Italy, but on average, if you are in a system such as Europe, in which regulation is pervasive mm -hmm. and in which the government takes away more than 50% of your income, you can hardly call it a free market system. Mm -hmm. What are the consequences of the financial crisis on the Italian economy? As I said before, the consequences of the crisis are the fact that disposable income, that is what people can spend and mm -hmm. what they have after taxation, has been falling dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, and that people are hopeless. You know, the big change in the um, Italian vision uh, in these recent years is that whereas in the past Italians thought, okay, this is a temporary crisis and we'll bounce back and we'll manage to come back stronger than ever, this time people are really scared about the future. We do not know whether we have enough money when we retire because the government said, maybe we're not going to pay you the pensions that mm -hmm. we had promised. That's difficult. We do not know about our kids because, mm -hmm. you know, if uh, you know that your child is going to be on his own when he leaves school at 20 or, t or university or college or whatever, at 20 or 25, and now you see that he's being, he's, he keeps living within the household until he's 30, 35, it's like, mm -hmm. what's going to happen to me? So there is widespread pessimism. Mm -hmm. Professor, what is the reaction of uh, Brussels to such crisis? If you think about the Italian crisis in particular, yeah. they only care about our public debt. That mm -hmm. is, um, about one-third of the Italian debt is held by foreigners. So they are scared that we might not pay them back. They don't care about the rest. Mm -hmm. This is my personal perception. Professor Colombato, are you optimistic for the year ahead? Uh, not really. I mean, we'll be lucky if GDP growth is zero or about zero. I don't mm -hmm. see why, uh, you know. Think of it this way. If Italy is stagnant and Europe more or less is stagnant, despite a 50% drop in the price of oil and in spite of massive depreciation of the euro mm -hmm. and despite these two, say, elements, Europe is stagnant, that tells you a lot about the health of the European economy. What is at stake for Mr. Renzi? Well, whether we like it or not, he's not risking much because he has no opposition. Uh, his mm -hmm. credibility is at stake, uh, but according to the polls, his credibility has already fallen dramatically. Mm -hmm. So for the time being, he does not have much to lose. He has to lose what remains of his credibility. That is true. But it is also true that he's facing no opposition at the time being. So I cannot see any imminent political threat to his future. A last question. What reforms would you suggest to the Italian government? If well, you the first thing, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> the list is long, but uh, they should, to begin with, they should introduce freedom of contract in the labor market. Mm -hmm. They should uh, privatize the pension system, mm -hmm. and they should make the judicial system much more efficient. Certainty about the rule of law is crucial. We don't have a rule of law in Italy the right at this moment. Cut down bureaucracy dramatically. Italy is one of the most corrupted countries in the Western world or in Europe. New laws mm -hmm. don't cure corruption. They do not reduce corruption. It's not a legal story. You must reduce the opportunities for corruption. Mm -hmm. And the only way well, co of corruption, cutting... Corruption was uh, in Berlusconi's era. It was in Berlusconi era. It was before Berlusconi, and it's now. Mm -hmm. uh, corruption has been accompanying the growth of Italian government sector, of public sector. 
Corruption has been a way of buying votes and buying consensus. And, you know, in order to have, well, corruption requires a lot of discretionary power. And you can only have discretionary power when you have a lot of regulation. So we should cut down regulation no matter what. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if we are not going to be in a perfectly regulated world, well, bear in mind that even a perfectly regulated world is a bad world. Well, Enrico Colombato, professor of economics at the University of Turin and director of the International Center for Economic Research in Turin, Italy, thank you for being with us. Thank you for listening to me. Have a good day.